This is the Lydian Spin, Lydia Lunge, Tim Dahl, and Simon Slater, all in different time zones. Not unusual for us, but here we go. Episode number uh, 217. The, the word is, Lydia, that uh, New York is hot as fuck right now. I'm just preparing for my visit to New Mexico for my workshop in the tomorrow and then to Texas. I'm just getting prepared. Oh, yes, you are. You knew it. You knew it. You're like, OK, I'm, I, I, look, the hot I'm always hot. What does it matter? I'm I'm always boiling. Do you think really the temperature makes a difference to me? Well, you're also a master of the Sicilian air conditioner. True, that is. That is a wet washcloth around the neck, the mm. hand fan and, uh, and, uh, and an ice cube up your ass. <laughs> when, it works, when though. It, wor it when, works. It does. It does. It went when necessary. Anyway, this is a special reissue because uh, a friend of the podcast recently june 30th just unexpectedly natural causes died and that's the incredible visual artist and musician rick frober so we're kind of dedicating this to him and to me it's just um so anyway rick was of course in pitchfork drive like j room hot snakes many other uh groups and did incredible posters and artwork promotional posters etc but it's just a reminder, you know, to appreciate who you're with. Stop engaging in useless bullshit. Get to the meat of the matter and realize it could be the last day of the rest of your life. Yeah. And that's when we point. were um, in San Diego, you know, you know, that's where he's from originally. Uh, people actually came to the show because of this actual episode. Um because they loved him so much that uh and he had just died at that point and they wanted just to have a connection it's interesting how a death brings out uh <laughs> connection where people kind of don't connect and that's what brings them together but you know it did that and uh well and also well, an unexpected death i mean just like natural causes well death is natural as much as we try to fight it but so that that's, you know, as opposed to a long illness, an overdose, getting hit by a train, falling out of an airplane. And by the way, have you heard of <laughs> the latest plane disasters? I mean, we're, we're all traveling, mostly not by plane, except for to get where we have to go and then by car. But um, United Airlines today had to close down all flights, some kind of computer glitch. And then Delta Airlines a few days ago had to turn back en route to Spain for a biohazard problem, which was somebody started shitting all the way down <laughs> the um, path of the plane for some reason. They don't know why, but it was a biohazard. They had to turn around. So that's, you know, so that's the kind of shit we deal with when we're chronic road dogs as we are. Yes. About my, my fly, I flew into Munich. Uh, I arrived yesterday into Munich. And I was on one of those Lufthansa double deckers, and those big uh -huh. planes, you you don't really feel any turbulence. That shit's like a boat. That shit's smooth. And that oh, and, nice. and, well, what happened was I, I I pulled a Lydian move, and I got on early, and uh, with little Jedi magic tricks. But but the uh, family in front of me was a family with six kids, screaming, oh. screaming, no. and, and and they're in front of me, and they and then they start like going into their seats and i'm like oh no i'm right next to them and <laughs> um, immediately i went to the um what is stewardesses and stewards is that not what you call them anymore but anyhow i went to that staff and um they said i go first of all i need earplugs and second of all i, I like to change my seat and they said well once they say boarding completed come right. here because you're gonna have a whole row in the middle, and I did, and I and I had a bed. I just pulled up all the arms and nice snoozosaurus rex. I was out. And well, uh, they're, they're, it, you're, you're lucky, I guess, because so much travel in the last few days has been in the in the states. I'm lucky to be leaving uh, right after all of the travel to go hit my yeah. No, no, we, we got there hours hours. Yeah, we we got there hours in advance. So so I mean, what about the idea of spending i don't even know what it costs but it's it's at least 400 but i think it's probably more spending money to go to burning man and uh i mean i i, I mean first of all and then getting wet i guess that burned some people a hole in people's pockets but if you're if, the whole idea of like compartmentalizing and like i work all year and 
for a weekend, I'm this. Uh, you're paying for that? It's like, what are you talking about? Now, I've never been, I have to be honest, but. And you will, will never, never go. I'll, I'll never go. I mean, I'm, I'm not into like a mass, uh, <laughs> you know, mass congregation. Everyone's cheering. It's, it's like, hey, uh, is there a mixologist with a handlebar mustache and a monocle <laughs> and a madman haircut around? Oh, there's a million. Not enough steampunks. I'll never go. Yeah, 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 they're all original. Ugh, well, gross. you know, the thing is, look, it, it is one of the weirder of all the festivals. So power to that. It's been going a long time, but it is not the kind of thing. First of all, I don't want to go to the desert for anything. I'm already I am already am a desert. I don't want to go to the desert for anything. And it well, just I mean, reminds me of like Glastonbury constantly gets rained out, mudded out, and people still go every freaking year. It's a disaster. Well, people are, it's sort of like when people try to superimpose uh, their house on their vacation spot. Like people come to Times Square to go to Red Lobster. You know, most people live in an intellectual and cultural desert. So, of course, on their fucking crazy weekend, they're going back to another fucking desert. Just saying. Yeah, well, I, of course, <laughs> did not attend the um, yearly Caribbean Chaos Festival that just went down. But oh I think God. it was... <laughs> But I think it was the first time, and this is just more to come, where the New York City Police Department were using drones to patrol people's backyard. Now, okay, that's one aspect, but here's another terrifying tracker thing. So the government has announced it's developing smart textiles that will transform any clothing into a surveillance tool. And it, they're calling oh, it smart, smarty pants. So the computerized <laughs> garments will feel, move, and function like regular clothes, but include capabilities to record audio, video, and geolocation data. So this is, uh, they're spending 22 mil on to develop this geared, of course, toward undercover agents, law enforcement, emergency medical technicians. Terrifying. It's uh, rather scary. You know, I was one of the first people, and this is going back decades, to speak about smart, smart trips. I mean, RFID. Um, because there was a great book called Spy Chips. So, of course, I had a piece called Tracker for quite a while. But the first things that actually had the tags in it were Max Factor lipstick and Levi jeans. And it caused a controversy. So it came out of that. But then it went into big ticket items. Because so stores can track to make sure you really got it. Well, I mean, now, you know, there's smart floors, refrigerators, phones, everything. And basically just more tracking devices. Yeah, nanotechnology and, and well, the science fiction people talked about it before it happened, and, uh, and if, which inspired, I think, a lot of this these designs. In that it's every everything is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and um, that's going to be interesting. I mean, I mean they say it's going to except for the cost of living, which gets higher and higher and higher. Well, well, what did I? What did I? Someone we need some wrote, nano rents. Well, someone, someone I wrote, I forget what it was. They, they said I didn't envision the future of. Uh, uh, minimum wage and hard labor and people struggling and then robots making art. It shouldn't have been the way other way around. <laughs> like what the hell's going on here? But yeah. Um, well, the United Auto like Workers, I mean, you know, coming from somebody that doesn't drive and has never had a car except for the one I crashed into a tree at 14. Um, they're going on strike demanding, and I think it's very wise. There's 100,000 of them. 36 hour work week paid for 40 hours, which is fine. 42 or 46 percent increase in wages. And the thing is, the American worker, like so many workers around the world, grossly underpaid, grossly underpaid. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely. Ridiculous. I, I mean, yeah, I remember I remember doing like a lounge gig in, in Long Island, I don't know, 15 years ago. And these kind of working musicians pass around some little paper which compared what like a wedding band would be paid in like 1968 and what they're paid now we're paid now less and that's not including in, uh inflation so it's like oh yeah. it's it's really beyond uh it's 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 unethical um well the, the we gap know. is so wide and, and ever widening it's it's just ridiculous it's not getting any better they can talk all they want about new jobs added these are so most of the jobs added are low-wage jobs the amount of home unhomed people in this country continues to grow. And it's just, and the billionaires and millionaires get freaking richer. And I mean. Yeah, half of the population is willing to take out a gun to defend 
20 no. billionaires. Yeah. It, it, it makes <laughs> no <laughs> fucking <laughs> sense. It makes no sense. But 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 um, I, I remember there was a survey when Al Gore and GW were in their debates and Al Gore kept on repeating, uh, you know, these tax uh, cuts are only going to benefit the richest people, like point yeah. zero. And then they did a survey. It's something like the vast majority of Americans believe they will be that one zero point zero zero one percent at one point in their lives. It, they, they believe that's going to be them. It, it's just well, scary. the gullibility of the average person, and we've seen it in the <laughs> every fucking election since they ever had them. But we actually have seen the gullibility of cult mentality that want to believe in something, anything, anyone greater than what they are thinking that they're going to reach that, you know, yeah. mystic state at one point, whether it's of riches or spirituality, it's just such, it's just well, really, you know, we, need, it, it, we need, we need, uh, we need actually a psychic enema in this country. I, I mean, I, I've, I've been very dedicated to be compassionate and, um, and forgiving and understanding, but oh boy, they make it fucking. <laughs> I mean, it's like sorry, I sorry want to be not, I want to be like understanding, but like you're the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life, and you're making my my minute right now facing this person like difficult yeah, I, for me. Really, like, like how, yeah. how it's not fair. Well, and I really do think that a lot of the stupidity in this country, besides being learned and automatic. And believing the original lie that it was founded for freedom and liberty for all, which is bullshit, is nutritional, uh, you know, devastation, like the way that just bad food eats the brain and just uh, people are stupid. That's it. Turns out you're right. Well, talk about stupid. What about this uh, teenager in Massachusetts, a 14 year old who did the hot chip challenge and, and, it was and died? Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was like a tortilla chip baked in the hottest pepper uh, powder you can that exists on the planet, and took a bite and died. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, this happens in this was happening for a while in the UK where they were having curry challenges with ghost pepper and uh, bye bye bro boy, <laughs> exploding stomach. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know why you'd do that. Um, Thomas Raiden. I mean, look, we, 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 we love spicy food, but there's a limit. I mean, there's just, you know, I don't yeah, need. Of I, course. Come on, please. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, well, is there like a sweet ch something challenge? Like, there is, is there like an equivalent to sugar that there is to these like extreme peppers? I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, how much sweeter can anything get? I well, mean, I, well no, but you think you, you, you take things, everything's everything to the furthest, right? I mean, People talk about spicy and sour, and but there that's must be a good question. We'll have to super that, that's sugar. Up to, yeah, well, may, I mean, but, but, maybe, but maybe we'll consult, we'll, consult we'll, Weasel about that. Well, that was his old lifestyle. Not, well, not well, may, well, maybe, maybe we're so addicted to sugar that we're all of general society's tolerance is so high that we're actually all at that all the time. I, 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 I don't know, but um, Thomas Raiden, thirty-seven, accused, but uh. Basically, his father had uh, what the ghost boy just like just came back from visiting his wife who was in rehab. Found his son, Thomas Raiden, thirty seven, in the front lawn. He's like, "What's up?" He's like, "I just killed someone." It was like it was like he's Flo Florida. He's like, "What?" Don't go I mean, in there. I don't think you want to go in there. He goes into the house and sees his grandson, Thomas Raiden's son, in a pool of blood, and he. Murdered him with a uh, grinder. Uh, with a I don't what? know how he a grinder, a uh, what kind of grinder? You know, like the tool, like a grinder. And uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. He sedated him. Well, I don't know, but he killed. He just like grinded his you know, Flor Florida flesh down again. to like an artery, and then he <laughs> bled to death. Florida again, which we will be at in soon. Retrovirus. It's just such a diverse wealth of absolute mania. And it's just no, it's just no heat damage. There's no explaining it, really. Well, it's always it, a there's, mystery to me. Well, there's, there's zero regulation. Um, it's There's private prisons. So, so the combination of like anarchy and uh, for-profit prisons, it's just kind of, you're going to get the results you're going to get, but it's also a very transient state. And so exactly. It's yeah, exactly. Just going back to 
what I was saying in the opening of this dedicated to Rick Froberg, not the only one of our participants who have sadly passed in the last uh, one or two years, but less than maybe could be expected considering how hard these people live and work is that every second has got a freaking count. You just got to do what you want to do and you got to do it with who you want to do it with. And just and stop being miserable if you can, because you know what? There'll be plenty of time to mourn <laughs> or maybe not once you're dead. Yeah. Actually, there'll yeah. be no mourning then. And, you know, For sometimes sure. I know I know all I know all about chemical gen- epigenetic and I know all about the state of so many different kinds of depression. But take a little time for yourself, a few minutes every day to just appreciate things yourself, the people, you know, what you have done, what you will do, what is better in this world, because we're always confronted with all the frickin bullshit and the negativity and the ugliness and the fact that there's 174 countries engaged in war out of 195 right now. Take a few minutes for yourself. And I guess that's why you come here. Because this is the Lydian Spin with Lydia Lunch, Tim Dahl, Simon Slater, the silent partner. And we do it, why? Because of you. This is the Lydian Spin with Lydia Lunch, Tim Dahl, and Rick Froberg, musical instigator. Graphic designer, artist, album covers, posters, T-shirts. <laughs> Anything else he wants to, I guess. Crap. <laughs> put, put, his, put his signature upon. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. I'm so flattered to be asked to be a, uh, your guest. So, so, yeah, Rick's also like a rock star. It's funny because when we met, I was living Midwood, South Brooklyn. He was kind of in the general area. I was, you know, everyone's on a shoestring. Avenue O. And uh, and at Ocean Parkway, that's where I lived. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I was uh, yeah. at Avenue on Ocean Parkway at that time. No, before. Oh yeah, bef- that's where you lived, and then you moved a little further north later. But anyhow, uh, to Kensington, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but basically, I was in right near Brooklyn College, Bedford, and mm-hmm. and I, yep. Yep. and uh, you know, with Dave bought in the Simon, and it was basically this shoestring budget. And you came over, Spec Brown introduced us. She came over yeah, for like a, yeah, a birthday yeah. party. You came along. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, you could st- it was still, you know, New York where you could, I mean, it's still expensive, but it wasn't as expensive as now. And, and we were kind of just like living in this kind of party house. It seems insane. Kind it, of. Yeah, it's insane. But we, it, we were having a great time. Music, yeah. we're playing, blah, blah, blah. And just, we got to know each other. And then Rick's like, well, my band Hot Snakes is playing. Do you want to come and check it out? And I was like, Sure. And I came, I'm like, wait a second, there's like a thousand kid boys here uh, <laughs> in the audience and they're all singing along to all your songs. I'm like, what? Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah, it's my, my secret life. I'm like Walter <laughs> well, well, anyhow, I, well, I, we appreciate. Like, you say a thousand boys, I'm not going to ask the age, but kind of my nightmare. I it is, it's my nightmare. Ideal dream. It's Ideal my dream nightmare too. <laughs> It's it's everyone's nightmare, but it's well, like- I, 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 yeah. I noticed that I don't know how how long you've been on Sub Pop, but your last record was on Sub Pop. Uh, a new, the New York band I was in called Obits was on Sub Pop for three records. The reason I bring that up is because it reminded me when you said your nightmare as well, hanging out with Piss Jeans also on Sub Pop. Yeah, those guys, and they have you know they have a big they have a boy following, and it was funny because Matt's always like. Anything but white boys, please. I'm like, hey, and help. Hey, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You, you really can't choose your audience. I mean, you, you can't just, choose your audience now. You can't do that. It's like it's, if they come, I think whoever wants to show up, I, I would love it if it was like you know, like there's occasional like a girl or something there. <laughs> but but you know, there's nothing you can do. I, I, like, I would love it if there was an occasional squirrel at my show. I mean, I got girls, I got boys, I got in betweeners, but. uh Certainly never a thousand of them because that's just, I got to look in all of their eyes. So what's up now in the new spring 2021? You feeling any better than you did last year? No, man. It's, it's, this sucks. sucks. I, you know, we just went for a walk in the cemetery at the Green, Greenwood Cemetery. Greenwood. Which is yeah. like, you should have stopped by. I'm right by there. Oh, really? Oh, man. Next time. Uh, that's, Amazing that's, cemetery, by the way. It's my favorite place in New York City. 
by far. It's the highest point in Brooklyn too. So you get an actual perspective yep. up there. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think Jean-Michel Basquiat. Yes, 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 he is there. And Billy yeah. the Butcher, there's a long list. Boss Tweed. So you're there today, you're saying? Yes. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. It's it's getting there. It's getting, it's, it's going to blow up. You know how the cemetery is it's just popcorn, you know? <laughs> Uh, it's just it, there's so many trees there that are just as I, somebody told me that has the widest variety of trees on the eastern seaboard of any park or cemetery and like that. It's like it's a, more than the Brooklyn Botanical it's, Garden. It's it's it's, 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 it's it's yes, it's 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 a veritable arboretum. It's like it's it's incredible. That place is great, and no so one. Are you often goes because it's a cemetery, so you're you're alone. It's great. I think you should stalk around my house a little bit more often. I'm only a few blocks from the cemetery. I'll be looking out for you, buddy. It's so good. So before we go to the kind of the beginning, you know, last I heard of you, all tomorrow's parties, were you supposed to be the curator and then they canceled because it kind of went out of business or stopped existing, right? Yeah, that that's when the uh, sort of the wishful thinking, you know, hit the immovable wall. Like they just, they just didn't have any money and they were they didn't pay anybody. Right. This is kind of a sore spot because we, because we, yes, we were going to curate this. We, we, we had it all, all done. And like, like the day before, not the day before, like a couple of days before we started getting, you know, like calls and texts from people that like, yeah, we haven't got our plane tickets yet and blah, 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 blah. And like, it, it was, it was, it, the whole thing was just this. Who did you have booked for? Who were you hoping to have? And was, this was the UK all tomorrow's uh, party. It was, it, it, yes. was, it, was, it was supposed to be at Butlins. Then they had to move it to Manchester. Then they didn't move it to someplace else because, because what, year, what, what year? This was probably, man, this is probably, uh, I guess this is probably 16, 17, yeah. 16. Four or five years ago. So, yeah, the four last five one. years ago. Yeah. yeah. It, who who did you want? Oh, we had all kinds of great people. We had we had like we were gonna destroy the UK. That was the whole idea. We had a lot of Spanish bands actually, like Wowie Los Args and uh Betanisa and like uh we had like people like John Cale and Diamanda Galas and it was it was cool. It was hey, gonna be cool. Did you ever run into Diamanda when you were in um San Diego? Never met her. I'm so scared of her though. Wow. <laughs> Rick, you, two things. You should be. Yeah. And <laughs> every, everybody should be. But bizarrely, I, this is so weird because I think I was at all tomorrow's parties more than anybody, which is bizarre because I'm never asked to be on any other festivals. But I think Vince Gallo invited me, Mars Volta, one of my favorite bands invited me. I did yeah. a spoken word curation there. Oh, that's cool. uh, the Melvins and Mike Patton invited like onto the Teenage Jesus reunions. Uh, fortunately, I always got paid. That was a great festival. It was great. So you would, you would, you were going like from the very beginning, right? No, I wouldn't say from the very beginning, but it just seemed because I was doing much smaller things except for the Teenage Jesus reunion. Like, I mean, they had never done a spoken word thing before. So I'm like, hey, I know a lot of great spoken word artists in the UK. Let's do it. Also brought Bibby Hansen. Tim, just for your reference. Okay. Yeah, I mean, somehow I guess because I was close by, I was in Barcelona. I wasn't. I was. A, I was a cheap date right. for them. And also, I'd go in the. That guy moved to Barcelona. Barry. Barry moved to Barcelona. Actually, he's like. After he knew we were both gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to crap on this guy because I think it was the greatest thing ever. It was really great. But it just, it just, you know, we got that unlucky sucks. and it fell apart. Yeah, it sucks. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm sorry that it's gone because it was really, and I'm also sorry that we were the ones that it went with because we, it was going to be a good show. The collateral damage, yeah. When you're the collateral damage, and it's, it's just what there's nothing you can really do. You're just kind of like, ugh. Uh, also, what sucked yeah. is it was so much better than the bigger festivals. It was doable. Oh, yeah. It was far more communal. You know, it was, and because there were cool people curating it, it was manageable to go see a lot of the other stuff. Yeah. So, well, sorry about that. And did you have a lot of stuff planned before the uh, COVID crunch came down? Yes, we did. And it all went down the toilet. Yep. Are you kind of like 2022 or you're just kind of like, why bother put all this effort until we actually really know? I, I think I'm the latter because I don't, I don't, I think people have to, it has to get back to where people believe in it, sort of like right. believe, believe that could be safe around other people and stuff like that. It's not even just like what the, you know, whoever, whatever the authorities say or whatever. It's like, it's about people trusting. Yeah. Trusting. It's, it, it, I would say, and it, it, there's been a lot of studies on like other uh, pandemics, obviously the, the Spanish flu, 
and how it's not just like a, a light switch going off when you have a house cat or a house dog and the front door is open and they're kind of like peering out like uh should i go for it uh, <laughs> what's going on here right. it's uh, you know everyone's a little nervous right you're a southern california kid and i remember you you revealed one night you're like yeah i was into bmx bikes yep when you come over to the house and Dave was there. We were constantly playing new uh, avant-garde music like Stockhouse. And you're like, what the fuck? And you guys are you know, crazy. You we, were, crazy. We, we were like partying. We we're playing all this weird music. And then I found an old rat album and I played that. And you kind of perked up. You're like, can you play that one again? Dude, I love <laughs> that. Yes. Yeah, rats, rats, rats from San Diego. Yeah. Rats yes, Diego. exactly. So when you're when I'm getting out, you're growing up, you're like a BMX kid. I don't know if you're a skateboarder too, Southern California. I'm a generic Southern California kid, except for except for I lived here for 23 years. So I'm not anymore. You're not anymore. Okay. But, so but, I, were you, so, but you were into the glam metal scene, even though you kind of, I liked it. Yeah. I liked it. Although you eventually became kind of post hardcore or whatever you want to call what you are. Um, the, the first punk band I ever saw, what made me get into punk rock was, was actually COC because it's corrosion conformities because, yeah. because uh, I went to a show. It was dark angel possessed higher acts or something like that. And, and corrosion <laughs> conformity. And I saw those guys. I was like, those guys are my people. Back in the day, I and mean, of course there was always some metal bands that actually they wore the costume of metal, but they were more punk. And then there was punk bands that wore the costume of punk, but they're actually, if you listen to them, <laughs> now you're like, hey, that's kind of heavy metal. But what was definitely for sure is just the marketing and that line, that cultural line with kids, like, what side are you on? And so it's funny you even talk about it that way. It's like, well, this is where I'm going. You can just you can just feel you just you get to feel like they're they were you're more your people. They were dirty and they had beards and they like they didn't seem to care about oh, what that they one, looked yeah. like. And it, it it wasn't like there wasn't this uh, constant. Uh, as metal has a lot of rules. Like like it's like you're supposed to do this and look like this and blah 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 blah. You're, you don't it's, it's not good. It's like hardcore actually is it's actually worse than metal. You know, oh, a, yeah, lot of, yeah. a, a lot of forms of music have have yeah. fashion rules, which is yeah they have fashion rules and 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 I don't. I guess festivals are great, right? And, mu and music rules. All kinds of rules, all kinds of rules. And I don't, I'm not saying I don't like rules. Rules are fine. It just has to be the rules I like. And, and like those, those weren't the rules I liked. Rick, you know what right. my rule is? No rules. Yeah, yes, well. <laughs> That's your favorite rule. Rules yeah. are for that's fools. That's what I kind of expected from you. <laughs> Thank yeah, you very much. A, oh, oh, that's, I'm but, surprised I've never heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> You were in the more in the LA area, right? Or were you? When did you move to San Diego? Or you were born in LA? No, uh, Whoa! Was, <laughs> this is really psychedelic. I was out. born in Los Angeles, but I moved there when I was in like fucking. I was in like fifth grade. I was born. In, I was born in Los Angeles. I I moved to San Diego when I was probably in the fifth grade or something. Okay. So I mean, I remember LA, but I didn't. You know, we would go up there. We'd drive up there. You know what? You know what? I've always hated that place. <laughs> <laughs> but you I, but you like San Diego. Uh, yes. Well, it's where, where my family's from, where my friends are from. It's, it's actually like a low key version of LA sort of. Well, you know, culturally it's, 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 it doesn't, you know, it's, it's, it's not culturally, really known, no, but, but, no. but, 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 but for People just skip it, but People out, skip it. Exactly. But for outdoor recreation. And I mean, it's kind of like just the, the beach life, all that it's kind of second to none in the United States. I mean, you can, no, it's, there's nothing better, but also, People don't really understand this about the San Diego. That, that, we, that we had a very, very, very strong music scene there, like where people were right. very supportive of each other. It wasn't. It was small, but it was very personal and strong, and everyone got along. Everyone supported each other. It might be before your time, but did you know about this gang that was in San Diego called F O N Friends of No One? Oh, I certainly did. I got beat up by them. Oh well, you know what? I pulled a knife on one and. I did not get beat up by them. You know, you, you know who you know. I bet you I know who you pulled the knife on. This I have guy no named idea. Joe Coochman. Was he like? Hey, I, uh, no, it was in a girl's bathroom, and they were talking about shit. And I'm just pulling the fucking knife out. I'm like, hey, that's not the way it goes down here. I'm afraid. I wish you had killed all of them. I can if come you, back. <laughs> I would. I would visit you in prison every day. What's terrifying is they've just discovered a way to take DNA out of the air. I don't think I'm committing any more crimes. And those that I've committed that I've not been institutionalized for will remain as they are. And that's the end of my so-called criminal thing. San Diego was a very ripe time for music. I mean, also LA at that period in the in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of things were, were coming up. A lot of things were happening. Totally. Very yeah. different vibe than the East Coast. And Yeah, it's very different. You're going to arts, you're going to school with your buddy and you, you start 
fucking around in high school like most of us did. Yeah. What made you get into this stuff? What stuff? Rock and roll and stuff like that. Playing well, um, <laughs> Play um, the it's 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 a weird thing for people. It's like, why, it's, don't you ever ask yourselves why? I, I know. Why, I know why, why, why am I doing uh, this? I, no, I know exactly why I got into it. First of all, I'm a nomad by nature, and second of all, I came to New York thinking I could do spoken word, but I had to do anti-rock music first. It made sense to me. I like the anti-rock music. I like I like the jerks. I think I I I, I like that. I just I don't know. It's just it's just nasty and mean and awesome. Well, <laughs> I've you know. I've done all kinds of things. A lot of them have been mean, nasty, and awful, and uh, not all, all of them musical. But that's... I said, I said, awesome. By the way, not I, oh, awesome. <laughs> excuse me. All right, thank you very much. I'm in yeah. California. I say awesome all the time. I forced Tim, <laughs> Tim, who didn't. Oh, I don't even think I'd ever heard a Teenage Jesus song to play drum once. I Maybe have heard weasel. those songs. Before. Well, he had to hear him to rehearse him. He could not understand the music because he's too freaking talented. Oh, it was torture for him. One show, Teenage Jesus, Tim on drum. I loved it. <laughs> I, I I played one professional drum gig and that, that was it and I got paid really well. You play drums? I don't. No. I, I did. I did. I did for Teenage Jesus and the Jerks. <laughs> oh, we, Weasel wow. had Weasel had to take his hands and show him how to play like a, a monkey. Literally, it was so below his in musical intelligence. I had so much fun doing that. Oh my god, it was crap. You're coming into you know your the heavy metal world and you're seeing alternatives to what heavy metal can be. It doesn't just have to be this glam thing, even though you liked. You know, you liked rat. It's, the, it's, it's a total, it's a progression. It's like, it's like, it starts with the dumb stuff, the dumber stuff. Like you start with like, you know, the dumbest rush or whatever, like it's, and it, and it goes from there. It's like, it, it, and like, eventually I saw punk. Right. Eventually, eventually I heard discharge or something like that. And it's like, it was like, oh my God, this is incredible. And how old were you then? I was probably 16 or something. Okay. So what was the, uh, you know, as a teenager and BMX bikes in Southern California and all that stuff, were your parents kind of like uh, kind of hands on and they kind of oversaw or were you kind of like a feral kid just kind of going out into the world and just kind of the latter. Okay. And so would you say that music and the arts, you also do visual art. Was that something that you just gravitated to, to or you, would you say it saved you? Would you say it just kind of just who knows? It just kind of with, with, with music. For, that's certain. That's like that's like a just a compulsion. That's like it's something I had to do. I don't know why I did it, but art. I was always I was always good at that. I, I could draw. Your art is so diverse. I mean, it's it's really beaut. It's beautiful. First of all, a lot of it's black and white. Somehow it's very intoxicating to me. I was looking up, up a lot of your stuff today, and I was just like, "Thank you." There's many different styles. I mean, you're like a, a visual artist, schizophrenic. Like I'm a musical schizophrenic. And I, every style was still really bold. And, and there was something beautiful about it, even though you're using either harsh elements, it was harsh yet beautiful, which is how I consider myself on the best days. Thank, thank you very much. The reason, the reason why it's kind of diverse is I'm an illustrator. I'm not, I don't call, I don't call myself an artist. I call myself an illustrator because, because I, uh, I get annoyed with art. I, I call myself a confrontationalist. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Uh, thank you. I love can I, it. Can I use that? That's <laughs> Get in line, honey. I've been using it for decades. But also, I'm interested that, like, your the art that, that you said, the artist, the visual artists, the painters that you were interested in, in, in one interview I read, were like Goya, which you mentioned Goya. Love one Goya. Of my, one, one of my, my favorite. favorite. Absolutely. My favorite. I mean, the black paintings, which are just, which he painted on his walls. Have you seen those? I, they've been taken off the wall since, no. I never but, saw them, I never saw them. Oh, well, they the, have, they're up in the Prado, right? You, you yeah, they're in the Prado. They're beautiful and also look capricious. I mean, he was doing engravings and paintings, Etch etchings. About, etchings about the war and about what, as he put it, the folly of human yeah. beings. It's so beautiful. I'm a super fan. Super fan, that's. Of all the things he does, especially of the etchings. Absolutely. That's, I actually do, I, well, I used to do etchings. The problem with etchings is like, you have to go someplace. Like I used to go to our students league to do them. I, I, I mean, I love all the paintings from like the 13 to the 1600s, like Caravaggio. I, I, like, I love religious paintings. I love paintings that especially have black backgrounds. That's, just, that's what suckers me in. We have a lot in common, my friend. Yeah, black is is what it's all about. And it's like <laughs> the, 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 the economy of, I just, I like, econ I like graphic art. Uh, and I mean, it, not just like 
using Illustrator or something. I mean, like, but like just really just something that's going to be catchy, you know? Because the, econ the economy of space as well, yeah. Right. Also, it's it also comes down to the punk rock thing too, because that kind of music is kind of like that. It's on the musical version of that. It's simple. Uh, you pick your Bold. spots. Bold. Yeah, Bold. exactly. Pick your spots, and like you don't overdo it. You're not. So you you don't you don't like maximalism. <laughs> Uh, so it depends. It depends on what it is. But give me an example of something maximalist, Tim. Musically or visually, or I mean, I guess you could say. Uh, I'll, I'll take a musical one. Well, Carl Heinz Stockhausen, he's a maximalist. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I understand that stuff. Like, I mean, you, you guys are playing at, at, at Crazy House where you guys lived, and you guys were like playing that stuff. I, I remember like Weasel was over there, and he yeah. was just like, and he was like, he was like. This Stockhausen record sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I disagree with him. We're, we're, and it was like a, yeah, because he, he doesn't, you know, Weasel's very hard with these things. So he he's like, uh, I only like Stockhausen like pre 1965 or something. So he has like a line. Uh, okay. and, and this is some other, this is like later stuff, right. which I disagree right. with him. Going back just for a few minutes about, about your artwork. So, I mean, look, I don't have unpublished or unread writings under my bed or couch. Are mm -hmm. you the same way with your illustrations? Do you just do the things that have to be done? In a word, yes. As opposed to being a, a chronic doodler. I'm not a chronic doodler myself. No, I don't pick up a guitar and start practicing it. So do you consider yourself prolific or not? Because it seems like, you, yeah, you, yeah, you have a lot of material, but you're not compulsively yes. going for it. You just It just comes along. During the whole lockdown over the last year, did you feel like you've got stuff done or you did you what did you how'd you handle this like artistically i fucking drank a lot man <laughs> okay I'm, I'm, I'm drinking now i mean it's it's like it's it's like it's i i i gotta say it. it's like it's 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 been a hard awful year i let lots of dead people yeah a lot of dead people right exactly and and, and were you in new york I, I, we were all here tunkering in new york did you stay here during the whole first three months when it was all really when getting I insane I got back from tour literally the day before it, it was closed down. Well, basically we did too. I mean, we, we, we got back from Los Angeles on March 10th. We had a show on Friday the 13th of March. And then I had a, my first show that was canceled was uh, with this guy, Tyson Surrey and Shelly Hirsch. I was really looking forward to it. It was March 15th. They're like not happening. And then it was basically like the streets are silent. You hear ambulances and fucking greater New York area, 30,000 people die in fucking like two months. Yeah, it's but like, let's, let's, go, let's go back to that moment because as soon as the lockdown was happening, actually, I had written, which I, like I said, I don't have spare things under my bed, this piece called Lockdown and put some of Grid's music to it. And then from that, I actually created with Grid's music, a whole kind of spoken word, Grid music, that's Tim's. I don't even know how to describe it. I just say alt, sensual, out, weird, psychoambient stuff. And also, but I can do this by re by remote. So we did it by remote and uh, also other stuff. I was very lucky because I don't leave the house unless I'm on tour. From traveling musicians like Tim, like you, it's tough. Mm -hmm. so, so you were drinking. <laughs> what what was oh yeah yeah Ly Lydia I think you're on the computer audio not your microphone because like I don't right, know but you gotta, when I, when I ask you, you you were drinking may I ask you what your drink of choice I mean obviously like rosé like wine were there spirits you liked or is there anything I, I'm, uh, actually, I'm 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 actually a, a, probably the worst well the worst thing I could do is drink whiskey but that's what that's probably what I like the most so so what does a whiskey drunk Rick Frogberg uh, <laughs> act, act like normal. I nice. <laughs> Just I, like I, you. I, I well because I'm a touring musician. Yep. I have a I have a, a fucking an insane iron tolerance. Li uh, Ironclad liver. I, right. I I mean I I, I could just drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and drink. Have you ever lost your voice on the road? Because as a singer, with, from just alcohol and fatigue, and you're just like some nights you're like, Never. or you don't give a shit. Never in your life. Whoa. All right. All right. Well Never. done. I, I know what I'm doing. It's like a. <laughs> Oh, it's like, because I, I, I don't know if you heard my music before. Yes, I was at your show. I told you. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, all right. So it's like, it's like pretty, it's pretty, pretty shouty. You have to focus on relaxing. That's what a big cognac is for before the set. Oh, absolutely. Well, man, it's not. Cognac is actually, actually, you're, that's, that's your darn toot. And that's one of the, that's, that was one of the normal pre-show drinks cognac well lydia when i first uh, joined uh, retro riders her band that was on the rider every night it was cognac 
uh, we did switch it to whiskey because the things we, you know, especially going into the holidays, you know, you're, you're not drinking a full bottle of whiskey every night. At least we weren't. So, 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 but, but you can give them as gifts, especially if you get a nice single malt scotch. And then at the end of the tour, We've got at least six or seven. Uh, well, the uh, beauty, the, I, I, I think that hang on, I think the difference between cognac and whiskey is whiskey. Yeah, I might go to the end of the bottle, but cognac, at least to me, I would always say, I think you've had enough. It's kind of because it's more narcotic and more sensual. It's not like the whiskey is like a truck driver and cognac's like an airline pilot right. down your gullet. The best thing, though, the best singing drink is chartreuse. That dark uh, chartreuse. I'll get, I'll get, back, I'll get back to you on that one. I'll try that next time. Before you moved to New York, you, you, you have a lot of success. Talk about that experience where suddenly your band just starts getting more success and you're like, well, this is what I always wanted or just like, I'm just running with this. Like, what was your... Uh, well, you know, it's a kind of a broad question, but like um, the band started uh, because... We were in bands before that, and like it, it was kind of a for San Diego, it was kind of a weird, almost a super group kind of band because we had the the rhythm section from this great band called Night Soul Man. From and we had me and John Pitchfork. Hey, was was the from Pitchfork. website Pitchfork named after your band? I, I like <laughs> I mean, to think seriously. So. I, I, well, it's strange I'm... because I had an interview with Pitchfork yesterday, and then you had a band called Pitchfork quite a few years ago. So I don't know. Everything is. It's cool if they want. It's cool if they review your record and they give you a sort of it's like it's like they give you this like these these tepid reviews like where it's like they just they go on for on and on and on they were trying to twist my tits in a certain direction i wouldn't let it go there anyway you had a, you had quite a few different bands though i mean i went through different incarnations at the time yet still working with your friend john correct and still mm -hmm. so was hot snakes yeah. the thing that really took off no, or drive like drive like Jay. That was, was the first was, thing yeah. that really took off. Drive, drive like Jay was the, was was on a major label. Of, of all the bands I've been in, that's the one that people really seem to care about the most. It's like the progenitor of like modern emo core or something like that, which is which is which is. Okay. Happy. <laughs> but you, you just like you can't pick your fans. Right. You can't pick the bands that you influence. You can't do any of that. But Hot Snakes is 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 like a. I was up in Drive Like Jay. I was like, "Why are our songs eight minutes long?" It's like I want. I just like I'm. I'm such a Neanderthal. You, 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 you're a maximalist. I'm more of a minimalist. I like my favorite band is like DC, <laughs> DC, dude. Yeah, man. it's like I like simplicity, and that, that's that's kind of what Hot Snakes were more about. Just keeping the songs under three minutes. Rick, I got to cut in for a minute. ACDC, I'm going to say T-Rex. You want to get simpler than that? I was big on T-Rex. <laughs> I like T-Rex. Real too. simple. That's great. That's great shit. I, I, this dumb okay. Chuck Berry riffs. I like, I, I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm stupid. I'm not a smart person. I like stupid music. Well, you know, as, as one of my good friends says, there's no other profession on earth than music where you come to a crossroads and you can choose the smarter choice or the dumber one you choose the dumber one and you and it's better it's like how is this even possible well you see that's the difference between your theory and mine I, it's, always, not, it's not my theory it's some of my friend of my theory generalizing i'm saying i always ask how stupid do you have to fucking be i can't figure it out which is why rick has a lot more people at his shows than i do because somehow he <laughs> freaking gets it or he pretends to get it <laughs> i'm just stupid that's all that's, i'm just I mean, I just like stupid shit. I just like, I mean, like, I like Motorhead. I listen to that now. Like, I was listening to that, like, yesterday. I mean, like, I, I listened to, I, I was listening to On Parole, loud. It's like, that's, I like. Motor, all right, now you're going a little too far for me. Motorhead cleans the blood, let's face it. It's kind of a blood cleanser. It's great. You can't get rid of that teenage boy inside you. Why the fuck should you? Why should you? No question though, but that's no, what you I prefer. Can't. Can't Is there it. any quote unquote smart music that you like? Yes, I like jazz. I like okay. I like stuff that you like too. But I there's what you like and there's what you sure. are. You know, if I'm gonna play music, I'm not you're you're way in a whole different universe than I am in. Because I, I know how you play. You're really, really good at what you do. I'm really, really lousy at what I don't I do, know about that. But <laughs> I, don't. Uh, it, I think you you are good at what you do. But <laughs> I like lousy though. That's the thing. I like lousy. 
All right, we're from three different planets here, which is what I like. I, for some reason, it reminded me of a child's book I wanted to write called I Love the Louse. The only reason I wanted to write, I don't want to write a child's book, I Love the Louse. Thank you. That's it's really because title, I love the, the flea, because one of my favorite books is Rats, Lice, and History, 33rd edition, 50 cents on St. Mark Place, years ago. And it's how the flea on the back of the field mouse during the back Black Plague killed more men than bombs, bullets, or bayonets. I love the louse. I'm just saying. Uh, Rick, could be a collaboration. Children's book, creepy creatures. You do the drawings. I will love the louse and the flea and the sp- the octopus, the stinging babies, and there we go. Talk about it later. You moved to New York, and then you you were in another band before you formed Hot Snakes in New York, correct? Hot Snakes happened when I lived in New York. Not, yeah, right, right. Not so, so, I... you, so you formed that, and you, and you, you kind of – you're coming back strong because that's when I saw you was with Hot Snakes. And um, I'm like, okay, well, Rick from the hood, that my my little drinking buddy is, is actually playing in front of a thousand boys singing along to his songs. It must have been a couple. Yeah, of yeah. There, it wasn't all, but I would say, I honestly, I, th- I mean, it's not, it's not even a criticism. It, it was, it was. I think it was like ninety eight percent guys. The girls were in the bathroom getting head. Um. <laughs> now you're talking. Now you're talking. Yes. So. Yes. So um. So 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 this is where we're going. So then the things are picking up, and then all tomorrow's parties, and then that kind of falls apart, and then you're kind of touring, and now here we are. You just keep plugging <laughs> away, man. If if people are gonna come, if people are gonna show up, and Probably. it's fun to do, and they'll pay and they'll pay you for it. They'll fucking pay you. That's, That's it. why we do it because it's fun to do you. it, and we have to freaking do it whenever we can do it because it's in our goddamn blood. That's why we got to do it. Totally, but they'll also pay you for it. So you so it's like it's like how can you say no to this? It's like yeah. it's just too fun. It's a problem once you're into this. Right. You're not going to get out of it because it's just so fun. It's so good. And I, I think it does suspend your maturity or something like that. I, I'm, I'm not sure what, what it, it, it does something to you what make, that makes that makes you a little emotionally retarded. Talk, talk for yourself there, honey bunny. But that's all right. I understand it. It does because, because I, I, I'm but it's I'm, invigorating. I'm myself, it it gives you, you life. But, Look, doing art, doing music, doing any form of creativity that you have to get out of you is life affirming not only for the artist itself but for other people i mean that's it 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 cleans the blood it's mandatory if it's burning in you if it's not just to keep it in your garage but it's you know art i consider art is the self to the universal wound now a lot of music is a wound to my freaking ears but still i'm happy people do it (laughs) (laughs) well that's a that's a much less vulgar way of saying what i'm basically saying i just tend to make things because this is the, the stupidity problem. Right? Stupid. So, but, so, I bet, I, but I bet. I bet. But I, but so I bet I, you're I really. Have, like, I bet you're really good words. in bed. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> new yes. direction well, or new erection in this case. <laughs> I'm gonna take a buy on that one. So, so I, I know I'm a little bit raunchy, but you know I've been locked up for a fucking year. So what do you expect? You know, I've done two comics. I did one comic that DC Comics put out with Ted McKeever that I wrote the the text for about a girl born with toxic shock whose pussy kills men. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had I'm nothing surprised. to do with it. That's all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys, you so do, you have any, do you have any I'll records just, in the wings that have not been released yet that are you're planning on? Okay, so Hot Snakes has like a record half in the can half in the can it's pretty good though um that's that's half in the can we still got to do more but i then i have to get in the plane and put a mask on and like whatever get a hazmat suit and go to san diego and like record record that then there's another one there's a live obits record coming out that i actually all right was when was it recorded like, like, it was recorded in brisbane in uh 2017 okay. at the zoo it's called oh, Obits Die at, at, at the, the, at, the uh, <laughs> at the Koala Sanctuary Zoo. I I I I, I, j- I just went there like uh, well about a month before the shutdown. But anyhow, <laughs> did you make the the Wall of Fame? Like everyone's yeah. on it. And it's really funny. It's like how eclectic that. Yeah, you have like to pope, pope next to Tommy Lee. It. It's all things weird. Sam so, so, loves koalas. Right. 
I think like it's like Noam Chomsky there too. It's it's, it's gets really wild. So <laughs> no, no, I don't think it was Noam, Noam Chomsky. Chomsky. No, but there is like some insane intellectual like that that's there too. I, I don't forget who it was. But um, it was too so, hot for me to go. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> so what would you say is your um spirit animal, Rick? Oh, easy squirrel. What? Whoa. Yeah. Why is that easy? What, what experiences? Uh... Wait a minute, Tim. <laughs> All right. You better fill them in. Hang on, Rick. Well, well, well Lydia's going to like this. No, I, lo- I love squirrels. Interesting. I love All squirrels. Right. Tim knows I love squirrels. I love yeah, squirrels. Sure. So, she see, likes, she likes the black squirrel, too. She likes it. And I've <laughs> even seen an albino. I, Rick, Whoa. I have a feeling we're going we're gonna to be like that. Uh-oh. Well, here's, here's what, here's, <laughs> I didn't here's say what, like that. I said like that. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, here's how I know. Here's how I know. I was in, I was in a, a, a park in Madrid with uh, my friend. And this woman was this woman, a witch, a bruja, was selling like cards, and she said to me, "Tu eres al día," and I was like, "I was like, what? I fucking hate squirrels," and and I was I was I, and she's telling me, like, "Oh, you like you like nature and all." And it's like, oh. <laughs> it's like, it's because I used to, I listen I, I lived in Kensington and I had a squirrel problem. One day, I came home. And my cats were looking at my bookcases. Uh oh! One got in the house. Uh oh! Yeah. And so I came back the next day, and they were still looking at my bookcase. Oh shit! I came back, came back the next day. They're still looking at my what? bookcase. What? So I'm gonna look behind the bookcase, and there was a squirrel, just fucking sitting there. It must have been hungry. It was just went. It, it just came in my house because we had a squirrel infestation in my house. Oh, I think like, I remember wait, that. Wait, actually. but but yeah. Tim, when he was living uh, in South Brooklyn, he had a. Squ- raccoon infestation. Yeah, I, I was at I was at East Fifteenth and oh, way oh, worse, way worse. Oh yeah, way way, way worse. worse, way worse. And, way and worse. Uh, you know, squirrels go a little quote unquote nuts, you know, and they're in your walls. But uh, but, but raccoons yes. fucking really go fucking insane. And uh, raccoons have like prehensile hands. They're like, yes. they're like cats. With- they, they, they can like they can like sit and they can grab a bottle of water and drink yeah yeah. And, and if you walk up to them, they don't even flinch. The witch told me I was a squirrel. When I lived so, in Pittsburgh, I would hand feed six squirrels that came to my window. And if I wasn't there on time, they would sh- rattle the uh, screen. I'm telling you, buddy, we got a lot more in common than the general public might be informed of until this conversation. That's so weird. I have something in common with Liddy Lunch. That's so weird. <laughs> Why? Okay. Why? I don't You'd know. be surprised. <laughs> I just thought, you know, like Lydia Lunch, you fucking, I think, you know, you're a badass, intense person. She's probably like, yeah, like, like, that's one side. I got many sides here, honey. You know, like, this is a multiple you're talking to. No biggie. I was like, you just, you just like be like, fuck you. <laughs> I don't care. About you. you just seem like, a, I don't know. I, I didn't know you're so nice. Well, uh, she is very nice and very, I didn't know very you positive. Dr- I didn't know you drank rosé or like squirrels, but I still wanted it, to talk to you, bro. No, 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 no. <laughs> not not like squirrels. I literally that's my spirit animal. That's that's me, a squirrel. According to the witch, I call all squirrels Ruffy, Tuffy, Ruffy, Tuffy Junior. Or I had one that was Limpy. That's all I can say. So we're gonna have to give you. A- oh. Limpy's a good squirrel name. That's a. Good we'll think squirrel. of one for you. Don't worry. Well, do you do you feel Rick? Ba- do you feel bad when you see the squirrel? When you see those kind of really kind of urban fucked up ones, kind of like feral cats that are all kind of scraggly. Do you feel kind of bad I for do. those? I do. I okay, do. I have to ask you. Have you ever seen One Hundred and One Dead Squirrels? The animated little. Uh, oh, it's so fantastic. We'll talk about it later. It's squirrels committing suicide in multiple ways. They just want to. What can I say? Like do lemmings it. style or, or like an individual? Well, for like instance, uh, for instance, squirrel goes into a doctor's office. There's a bag of blood. He hooks himself up to it. Nurse walks in. He explodes full of blood. Love it. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I'll try that to dig. I'll try to dig it up that, for our. For that our, sounds. That sounds amazing. It was based on 101 suicidal bunnies, which I think was a Japanese thing. But oh, what can I say? In my opinion, that sounds amazing too. Squirrels can. T- <laughs> Squirrels can do no well, unless they bite you on the nose when you're trying to feed them a French fry. Well, so you you, you know that that whole installation thing about you know I think it was in, started in Chicago. I don't know where they put cows around cities. You know that whole thing. Well, someone I hate I hate I, I hate those kind I, of cows. I hate those too. But I hate no, that this was in Chicago. So in Chicago, there was an artist that was making it. They had them here. They had them here. The, the, this artist in Chicago was doing yeah. a statement against that and started planting these kind of squirrels squirrel statues all over the city. 
And then as a statement against the cows. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Hudson, I mean, uh, Catskill has ca great. the cats. I mean, they, these are these are just dumb things, you know. Uh, I don't know. These are just cats aren't dumb. No, cats are not dumb, but the cat sculptures, which litter Catskill, are horrible. They're not good. Uh, you know what? I'll go with the Tasmanian yeah. Devil as a sculpture. Dude, what does what that what even look like? You, you didn't see it at, at the Brisbane uh, sanctuary. They had a Tasmanian double. Well, at the, Bris at the at the airport in Australia, they have all kinds of um, copper or Tasmanian devils, like next to suitcases, picking pockets. Anyway, but what? what why in Brisbane though? Because it's a Tasmanian. Because, well, animal. because ta it's Tasmania is right off of uh, Australia, and then the, and their zoos that are pretty exciting. I'm not sure which right. airport has the Tasmanian devils right when you walk out, but it's the same airport where Tim, if you recall, because we Hobart, were in Australia. Hobart, 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 Tasmania is where they had the. Which, I, by the way, it's where I got six hot cops to pose for a picture with me, because that's the kind of shit I do on tour. I hang, hang out with cops. I. <laughs> Well, I sit, I Rick, seduce them, Rick. I make them cry. You have no idea. Oh, no, Rick, you've hung out with cops. In fact, you've both been to that bar we used to go to in Marine Park, Billy's. Remember a couple times? The, that's a cop. That place, that's a cop that place rules. <laughs> yeah, that's a cop. Trust me on this. Not only do I get free drinks, I beat everybody, but I do. I beat people in pool, but usually I play with myself. I make cops cry. And then occasionally I even have a slow dance with Jim Dahl. Dude, I gotta hang out with you guys more often. This, 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 this sounds, this sounds, this sounds so fun. Rick, we're winding down soon, and what I can't believe, but what Dan I'm gonna say is, how did the two of you just miss each other? Because just as you kind of exited my kind of regular life, Rick, Rick, Lydia right. entered him kind of shortly after. So you guys kind of just like, what do they, what do they call it? Two ships in a night kind of situation. Uh, shoot two ships passing in the night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'll, there's, I'll, a, there's a I time. The excuse I'll, me. There's a. She's my spiritual surrogate. That, 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 that's, that's, uh, that's, that's there a is a time and a place for everything. And I right. think it might be coming soon. That's all I can say. I think that the time is certainly not running out. It's running slower than ever before. But that gives us plenty of leisure time to have a nice cocktail hour. That would be you, me, and the lady of your choice, Tim Dahl, whatever else you want to bring, and possibly Simon Slater. It's an invite. It's on me. Uh, it's got Simon's got to be there. I, I don't know. <laughs> there he is right there. No, I, I all I get, all I, uh, Simon's, <laughs> there he is. There he is. That, uh, okay, so all I saw before is a robot. Oh, there's a robot again. Oh, so he's, a, he's a cyborg. He's a cyborg. Robot profile. Robot, <laughs> robot profile. It's like very strange. So I want to ask Simon some shit, but I, this is. This is you can, you can ask ahead. him. Yeah. We, have awesome, we have plenty for the podcast. You can ask him whatever. All right, so so we got to hang out. We are, I, you know, that's the that's the conclusion of this whole podcast is that we're actually in the physical realm. We're gonna hang that's out. The, that's the fucking point of this whole thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a big it's a big ruse. <laughs> we're just trapping you right, to, right, to get right, you right, out right, of your right, apartment. Right, right. And um, right. well, and when you're in Park Slope, literally, you are. You know, the thing is, Tim's ten minutes away. Park Slope is like six minutes away from me. Have you been vaxxed, Rick? Not yet. No, not yet. Well, you know what? I signed up. Walgreens is two blocks away. Got mine there. Get my second one on Friday. It, it, you went to Walgreens? Uh, Tim told me one day that the, they're dropping the age. Two o'clock in the morning, I got online. Two days later, I had an appointment at Walgreens, two blocks away. Going for Friday from a second one. Tim has his first. Simon has his first. Got to get in line, buddy. Or don't you want yeah. it? Yeah. No, I no, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll fucking. Well, if it. we're all vax, we don't care if you're not. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. This has been a great conversation with the multi-talented musical instigator, Rick Frober, a great illustrator. I feel a project coming on in the future with him, and I I don't know why. I just feel his graphics, oh, yeah. my oh, words. Yeah. We're gonna do something. Friend of Chim's and Simon's. This is like a family affair suddenly. It, even though I've never met you, we have so much in common and we're neighbors. I I've say, seen you around. Yeah, you have at the graveyard. No. I, I, used to, I used to live in Barcelona. That's so cool. Yeah, well, yeah, I didn't say me tramping. Squirrels in Barcelona. Many connections here. We, hey, we got a lot of things in common. All I'm saying is this. It's not when you meet somebody, it's that you meet the right people and you usually do in your lifetime. And I'm very happy to know you, my friend. And this has been the Lydian Spin, Lydia Lunch, Sim Doll.
Rick with many hats and many bands, and they were most recently hot snakes coming back at you again. Froberg. Gracias. 